Now that you know that you can exceed the octet rule, well, we can have more than the two, the three, or the four <laughs> effective pairs around a central atom to give a shape for a molecule. Look at the formula for PCL5. That should have impressed you right away before when we've mentioned that, that molecule. You should have said, well, how do you build that? Because if you do a Lewis diagram for it, phosphorus has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. It's already exceeded the octet rule. Yeah, but it can. And by the way, the formal charge for phosphorus here, since it's in group 5 normally, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 bonds and no lone pairs, gives it a formal charge 0. That's the best Lewis diagram we can do for PCL5. Okay, so PCL5 has 5 bonds around the phosphorus. So, you know, one better than a tetrahedral. What are we going to be looking at here in three-dimensional space? Here it comes. Here's the shape for five effective pairs, and it is the seed shape for five effective pairs. Everything is arranged in something called, ready for this, trigonal, because there's three in the plane here that you can see, right? See that plane? Three in there. But if you made this into a three-dimensional shape with sides, one, two, three, four, five, six sides, you'd have like a, a three-sided pyramid on top and a three-sided pyramid below. Name, trigonal, bipyramidal, because of the two pyramids that it makes. Okay, that's the name. So this is a trigonal, bipyramidal shape, and you can tell that all of these being in the same plane, looks to me like they're going to be 120 degrees apart and 90 degrees away from this one, this one up at the top, 90 degrees away from the bottom one here, and these guys 180 degrees away from each other. That gives a very symmetrical, nonpolar type of shape. Okay, trigonal bipyramidal. Now, PCL4 negative also exists as a molecule, and it's got a phosphorus in the center, four CLs around it, but an extra lone pair. So it's still got five as the effective pair, or the seed shape, of trigonal bipyramidal. But one of the chlorines has to go here, and we put a lone pair in. Where do we take it off? We don't take it off the top of the bottom. The lone pairs like to be in the plane, because then they can be farther away from everything else. Because lone pairs, VSEPR theory tells you, that they occupy the most space. They want the most space, so they go in the 120 degree plane, always. So, we pluck off this chlorine. We understand that the lone pair is out here. What's the name of the shape? Believe it or not, this is called seesaw. It's a seesaw shape when you have five effective pairs, but only four bonds. Seesaw shape. Now, CLF3 has one, two, three bonds around it to the fluorine, central chlorine, with two lone pairs around the chlorine to give five effective pairs. So, trigonal bipyramidal arrangement of electrons in the five effective pairs, but you got a lone pair that you got, a, you got here, and another lone pair. Where are you going to take that lone pair? From the top of the No, no. From the plane, boss. The plane. So, there are lone pairs here and here in the plane. So, what does that give you as a shape? T-shape. This is called T-shape when you have five effective pairs but two lone pairs in the plane. T-shape. Okay, the last one for five effective pairs, how about I3 negative? That has, in the central atom, one, two, three, four, five effective pairs. When you have extra lone pairs to put into a Lewis diagram, because this has 22 valence electrons, you need to put them in the center. So, now we've got an I with five effective pairs around it, but it's only got two bonds. The lone pairs in the plane, all one, two, three of them, and that leaves you with linear.